Hey everybody, Edo here, and I am excited today because I have Rodney Smith of Watch It Played on. Say hello, Rodney. Hey everybody. Look, I'm excited too. It's a reunion. We haven't done this in a little while, but we did do this once before. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, it was a while ago. And uh, probably different different hair lengths and, and different backgrounds a little bit. Maybe, maybe not so much for you, but... Maybe perhaps. you more than me. <laughs> maybe me more than you. But... Um, but we were, you know, we interact pretty uh, not I don't know about often, but on occasion because with pencil first games, you do you did recently the whatnot cabinet, right. and I don't know we were talking on a messenger or something and yeah. about rules and oh you were playing a game and it was like a really expansive game, and we just started to have a conversation about what's easier in terms of like rule books and learning and teaching, and you do this hilarious thing where you like respond in messenger with voice memos yes i do and I it's true listening. like people will, will, will text me a message and i will almost always reply with an audio clip i don't know if it's something that has had to do with the last year you know and just everyone being so disconnected there's a little part of me it's like i want to hear voices and i want to like communicate with my voice or maybe it's just also that text is so easy to misconstrue yeah that i've gotten into the habit now of people getting uh, little audio bombs from me of like, hi, hey, it's Rodney. What, yes, I'd love to talk to you about this subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, well, you know, and I was listening to it, and I was just enchanted by your voice, and I was like, <laughs> we should do another one of these. Um, hey, great. <laughs> See, I'm glad I did it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, it's actually, I, I, it isn't natural for me. I, I do know a couple other people that do it, and at some points there's a, a little bit of frustration because you're like, it, it's longer to consume than a message. Yes. Um, but, yeah, it's a trade-off. It's longer to... For me, it's longer to type up all my thoughts than it is to say them, but it's longer for the person to receive them in a audio message than in a written message. So it's a yeah, trade off. So you, you're, yeah. you're, you're putting the penalty on the other person. Is yes. It? Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate it. And actually, I, I, I do completely agree that the amount of color and information that you provide in a 15 second clip is yeah. much more than the typo filled half messages <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a text message. But, you know, okay. that's just that's how we got to now. That's how we but, get to now. Um, Here we are. In, in talking to you, I thought it'd be really interesting, actually, to talk about r rules and learning games. And in particular, I was really curious, and I am really curious because I don't know the answers to what you're going to say, mm. um, about, like, as somebody who is, you know, a professional game teacher, right? You're, you, you've you created sure. a, a career out of teaching games. Um, it inherently means you have to be a professional game learner. Um, and so, <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah. 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 And so what I was interested in understanding and thinking through was sort of when you like get some rules Yeah. for you, like what are the hallmarks of a really good rule book? Um, and like, what are the things that make it easy for you to, we're going to talk about teaching, but just to start with learning, like what mm. are the things that help you the most when you get a rule book to start reading? Um, and then we'll go from there. Sure. No, no. I, I, listen, I, I love this topic. I think about it. Uh, probably obsessively because <laughs> because of what you said I do end up having to read a lot of rules and then kind of regurgitating those into some kind of video form right so uh, I I was I was I was thinking quite a bit about this before before our conversation because I want to try to paint a couple of pictures for people for me um, one of the things that really helps is when things are presented in the rule book in the fashion that I'm going to encounter them as I play I have come across many rule books that present information. They want to give you pieces of the puzzle. So they, hey, I'm, maybe the rule book starts with, hey, if you see this icon, here's what this icon means. Hey, if you see this term, here's what this term means. And they start defining a variety of things. And to me, that's like giving me six different puzzle pieces that don't connect together at all. And I have just these six different pieces. That's so different then if you give me a puzzle piece and then give me a second one that attaches to the one that you just first gave me, because not only do I see how it fits together, I'm actually seeing more of the picture now too. You know what I mean? Like it's starting right. to make more sense. If you build one rule on top of another, I find for myself personally, that's uh, much easier on my cognitive load. Because if you give me all the concepts first and then teach me after, you're asking me to remember several discrete things that so far don't mean anything to me yet. Right. As the person who's just opening this up for the first time. And to take this puzzle analogy a little further, when you buy a puzzle, you at least get a picture of the complete puzzle before you even start the thing. 
with a board game, I don't know even what the whole thing looks like until I get to the very end. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, so yeah. I don't even have a frame of reference really to go by, except if you're an experienced gamer, you might bring some things to the table. Like, sure, oh, sure. I recognize that's a worker. I kind of know what workers do in a game. But like, hey, can you imagine if someone has no context for any of that? <laughs> like, yeah, it's... for sure. And I mean, even as an experienced gamer, there are rules where I'm like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on here. It, it, it <laughs> actually, I think there's an interesting analogy uh, or comparison to gaming, uh, it's a pet peeve I know of Keith Mateka's, but uh, it bothers me too. Is when you're, you know, you learn a game and that you're presented as a player a, a, a gameplay impacting decision before you've actually started playing. Like, hey, you're going to be dealt four cards and you need to pick which one is your victory condition yeah. or something, right? Yeah. And it's like, I don't even know how to play right now. Like, <laughs> like I, I, it was taught to me, but like, it's so arbitrary. I'm just going to take one at random because I don't want this load right now. I just want to start playing. Um, it does, in the way you described it, though, it, it did sound like you were suggesting to some extent, starting with a piece. I wonder, like, do you like a rule book that has like an overview and a setup first? Or do you actually want, like a, a thinner entry point than like, here's everything out in front of you? I, my, me personally, I, I, here's how I like it. I like a little bit of theme just so again, cause that's like almost showing me the picture before I get to the end of the puzzle, right? Tell me sort of thematically what I'm doing. I don't really need to be told. I know some people say, start with the objective. I'm a little strange that way. I prefer to see a little bit of the, I prefer to see the setup next because I need a sense of place before the objective even means anything to me. Oh, oh, I see. There's these kind of pieces. Here's the map. Oh, we're in a world. Oh, I have an army. Okay. So then later when you tell me the objective is to defeat the other person's army, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. I've seen the armies. I've seen the board. I've, I've got a sense of it. And then immediately after that, I want to just start with, okay, the game is played in a series of rounds. A round is broken into five phases. We start at phase one and then just start telling me what, what happens in phase one. Um, I think what I've realized is there are rule books that do an excellent job of telling you the rules, but that's not the same thing as teaching you the rules. I have an example here actually in front of me. This is a game that I, I really have been enjoying the heck out of right now. Cuba Libra by GMT Games. This is its rules of play. This is like really, really dense rules. <laughs> I, was, um, I was like, oh man, it's I just, just walk away Paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. But I have to tell you something. One of the best rule books in terms of telling you the rules, but that's all it does. It just tells you. It doesn't waste one word teaching you any of them. <laughs> like, and I don't know if that distinction is is clear, but like saying what something is and explaining what something is is two totally different things. And I think sometimes rules writers, uh, someone who's been assigned the job of writing the rules for the game, I imagine many of them think their job is how do I get the rules into this document? You know, and so that becomes their focus. Their focus is how do I arrange these rules into the document so the rules are all here. But I really do think the purpose of the rule book is not just to get the rules in there, it's to teach the rules to the person who's reading them. And that's like, that takes extra words, examples, paragraphs of context and other things. And, and, and actually, I think, I think there's this really interesting uh, spiral, potentially downward spiral loop in there, which and mm -hmm. I, I absolutely see what you're talking about all the time. Just the distinction between the, what is what is a rule book for? Is a rule book for teaching somebody how to play, or is a rule book for explaining the rules? And right. uh, especially via Kickstarter, but BGG and the board game community in general, you have a large. Oh, I don't know, I don't know how big it is, but a, a, a number of people, yes, who are very. Um, pushy on making sure and and i i'm trying pushy is the wrong word because it's negative i i don't want a pejorative it's like okay there's a group of people that expect a rule book to call out all of the corner cases all of sure hyper detailed exacting precise what about this what about this what about this what about this which right then you end up with a rule book of 50 pages long and right, we got well, a new problem but it but it also <laughs> inherently pulls i think it's it's trying to get and explain all of the one-offs, which are important. Um, yeah. I think pulls a rule book towards just being the rules. Whereas mm -hmm. many times, I mean, I'm struck, you know, anytime I open a game, like, let me think of uh, 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 a Century Spice Road, right? As an example. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. oh, the rules are on one, <laughs> one page flip. Two pages, yeah. yeah, one yeah. Page <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then playing, there was a, a whole bunch of times I was like, what happens in this 
you know, uh, where I'm in the situation and there's like this little problem. Yeah. Doesn't really actually answer this question. I'm going to guess it's this. Like, yeah. that, on one hand, you could see that as a very negative thing. Like, hey, you've gotten to a point in the game where you don't have an explicit answer to X question, which, I mean, is important. But the advantage was I could open the box and play it in the same sitting with people around me, right? Like, Sure. I, well, I'll tell you something. You you bring up something, which I think we should maybe drill into a second, which is something I've been learning to come to terms with myself. You know, when you said you get to that point, you're looking at the, the two-fold page, and you're like, I'm not quite sure exactly how that works. I guess I'll just make a guess at it. I'm realizing that's what happens 99.9% of the time. Most people, they don't even pick up the rule. They just go, it must work this way, and they carry on. They aren't sitting there going like, we need to know exactly how this works and we need to know like if this edge case, somebody at the table goes, well, I think it works this way or they say it authoritatively enough that everyone just doesn't question them. They go, it works this way. And those people carry on with their day and they're none the wiser and they don't care. Like oh, I yeah, care I, deeply. I mean, like I think everyone's <laughs> had the experience and the player. Uh, I like to joke because this is a common case with Aldo. <laughs> but like he, it's so often the case he reads, he, he learns a lot of games. He likes teaching games. But he, you know, I would probably assume he's a rule book skimmer, uh, if I had to yeah. guess. Yep. Yeah. Um, but you'll get to somewhere, and then you'll be like, "That we just played through the whole game, but that didn't really make sense." Can I see the rule yeah. book, please? Yeah. Um, but um, I think it's very often the case that players just play. In fact, from a design, so much of this also ties into how people design games. I see all the time that there was that example of giving me all these decisions that I'm not really yet informed of to play. But right. another example is oftentimes. A designer will try to sometimes be crafty or sneaky or subversive, but like use a word in a different way, like or define a graveyard as not a graveyard or define a discard as not a discard or say or in the rules explain like, no, but when you shuffle, you do it this way. Yeah. Anytime you have a common sort of. Um, um, I know exactly what's going. The word I agree. I'm like dispersed yeah, yeah. understanding of how a game, intuitive understanding of how games work, yeah. and you shift it. Most times, people will just play the way they think it should be played. Absolutely, I think I think the burden is on that designer at that point. You have got to put some kind of spotlight on that rule. If you're going to twist the norm, then you've got to highlight that in some way. I think it was Fantasy Flight Games. It did something. I think it's Eldritch Horror. There was something with the way the discard pile works. I don't remember now. It's been a little while since I played. But you like, you dealt cards from the bottom of the deck. All right. They don't. They have. They have their rule book in two books. Like the how to play, and then the rules reference. Like when you get playing, if you have questions, refer to this thicker document for those, you know, more fiddly questions. Well, bottom dealing is not a common thing. <laughs> I would never think I've got to go digging through the reference to to ask, hey, where do you deal the cards from? Is it from the top or the bottom of the deck? So I would never it's think... It's part of the madness. It, yeah, I would. It's, it's, yeah, I think you're right. I guess it's very thematic that way. And so because of the way my mind works, and I'm wired, and I do very, care very deeply about the rules and getting everything right, I had to read that rules reference from start to finish. That is a... The rules reference is just an alphabetical listing. It's not... There's nothing narrative in there. But by reading it through there, I did find rules like that. that I'm like, I would never have thought to look that up. So I think that's that's one of those things that like you were saying. That's incumbent, I think, on the designer or publisher or whoever. You got to highlight those things. If you're breaking what we consider the norms, I guess, whatever those might be, then please do make it very clear, or or don't be that clever. Yeah, and like, I, and I think <laughs> I think some good examples of it because I, I make mobile games, but some good examples yes. of it are like, we've gotten to a point where there's an understanding of like. What swiping up is, or left, sure, or right, yeah, good or example, yeah, yeah. zooming, or right. hey, when you have a paginated thing, you put dots at the bottom. Like there, are, and and you know, Apple and Android are a little bit different, or whatever. But there, so like when somebody's like, well, when I have this, you know, I'm gonna have you double tap and then drag. It's like that's not something. That's not how it works. Right. And, right. and if you break that norm, if it's not for a pretty amazing reason, like I'm gonna put my <laughs> back button on the right side. It's like that's not where people are going to look for it, and then every time they get to that, there's got, you're just you're like piling on these little weights that drag down the experience, right? Like you're yeah. like hooking them on. Um, okay, but so let's let you you talked about a rule book giving you um, maybe a, you're not a huge fan of an objective first. I will say a lot of a lot of rule books do yeah. put that there. I, I'm okay, um, I'm not going to quibble over it. I'm okay. not. Gonna, I think it's fine. It's, it, I, it should be near the beginning. Let's okay. say that <laughs> <laughs> a yes. setup, and then you have a setup, um, yeah. and then 
So I guess one thing I'm always curious about, like, do you like it? There's one that's more like teaching it to the person who's going to teach in the, I mean, this is sort of a rule teaching, but there's the one where you're sort of teaching um, the rules. It's like the difference between the game master and the game player, like one sort of talking about it broadly. And then there's a lot that oftentimes do it from the perspective of like, here's how you play. Like, here's what your play, here's what a turn will look like for you. Um, yeah. Do you have a sense between those two or what works better? I mean, I think I think most rule books that I've read generally teach it like or the objective is you you don't know anything yet. You've got this box of cardboard and wood that means nothing to you yet. And we're going to we're going to give this meaning by you reading all this and you'll understand how things work. So I I just for me, I, I think going back to that first thing, I want rules to build on top of each other. So I'm not having to cognitively remember a bunch of concepts and then later on discover how they all fit together. I think that's important to me. I don't need the rule book to necessarily teach me how to teach it. I think that's kind of the burden of the rules teacher to figure out how best to put that together for their group because I think it can change, you know, from group to group too, what what learning style they're going to need. I mainly just want I don't want it to be a choose your own adventure book, you know, where it says like, "Hey, you'll learn more about this on page 12." And you get to page 12 and it says, "You'll learn more about this on page five section a you know like i don't love that either sure so again I, but i also realize when you're writing a rule book you can't always give everybody every rule at the moment in which they would normally learn about it like it it right. gets clunky if we have to stop in the middle of telling you the flow of the turn to then completely define combat and then how defense and attack work sometimes you do need to break those things out right, right, right. but what, what i would say is i'd rather get it taught early and then have the later rules refer back to that. Then say, hey, five pages from now, you're going to learn about that. Because now I'm still kind of in the dark. Like, I don't know what that is. I'd rather have a rule taught and then refer back to rather than not taught and referred forward to to some point in the future. Right. And I, well, I guess, you know, and I think it's interesting, right? Because you, you mentioned teaching people play in different styles. It's always interesting when you have a game. Um, you know, that, uh, from a publisher perspective, when you when you're play testing a ton, right, and you're like, mm -hmm. this is like, especially at a convention. A, a convention's a great example of like, hey, over this three day period, uh, you know, the, these these fabled conventions, over a yes. three day uh, over a three day period, you're going to teach this single game to four hundred people, you know, yeah. in sequence. And actually, I mean, it's it's an it's an awesome thing to do while you're working on your rule book because you're like teaching it. But um, but I I I oftentimes end up sometimes teaching it very different than how I might think of laying down the rules. Are yes. there cases where you find this is an example of a really great rule book and I didn't prep you, so you know, I might not be able to sure. read it, but is, is right. this an example of a really great rule book that just is very different than how I teach this game to players? Like, yeah, actually, no, no, I, I can think of an example. Like, actually uh, right here. <laughs> no, no, yeah, almost, uh, empires of the North, uh, from Portal Games, I think is an excellent rule book, but it's not the way I would teach it. Again, it's it's an ordering thing. I think everything they talk about the rules, I, I didn't walk away with any questions at the end of that rule book, which was great. You know, that's really what I always want is like how many, because usually when I'm, when I'm preparing to do a video, I'm reading the rules, I'm playing the game for the first time, and I'm taking copious notes about everything I didn't understand or I need clarifications on it. And that's when I remember having like really nothing to ask. But the order of how I would teach it, it's very different. Like if you watch my video compared to the rule book, it's a different order entirely. Because again, I don't think it's laid out in the way that makes the most sense either for video or for the way I would just communicate it to, to somebody. You know, actually, Good Believer is another good example. Very dense game. I've now taught this a few different times, and the way I teach it is very different than the way it's presented in the rule book because I think there's a more intuitive way to present the information. So, like again, it's that that's how, that's that juggling between the rule book's job, which is to present the rules. And the teacher's job, which is to teach the rules to somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know? actually, I'm curious. I think, they can, I think they can accomplish both. But I think most of them don't focus on both. They focus on the first and not the second. Is, is there a place – I agree. I, I, and I've seen this in a few rule books, but I'm curious to see, like, if you think it's unnecessary or helpful or harming, um, which will be like – sometimes they do it – I mean, I've seen some really well, – I do all these Kickstarter previews, right? So, like, sure. I get rule books at very, very different stages. But um, – yeah. Something will it'll be like a little bit more standard in layout, and then sometimes it's like, hey, when teaching this game, we suggest you teach it this hmm. way, or we, you know, we suggest yeah. you. Do you think that's helpful, or do you think like, no, just 
have a good rule. I don't know. It almost makes me. I'd be a little worried. Like, well, why didn't you? Why didn't you teach it that way in the first place to me? Um, I don't know because it, it's hard without an example to know. Yeah. Oh, that's why. That's why you you taught it this other way. Because again, right. if I'm going to teach another human being, that's that's the way I would want to be taught. So rule book, do that to me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, so, I mean, it, it it goes back to that first thing we talked about, and and actually, this is even a nomenclature thing that comes up. Like, there's some people call it instructions. Some people call mm-hmm. it rule book. Some people call it how yeah. to play. Like, yeah. And it it certainly could be argued that really at its heart, a rule book should be a how to play first rule book second or instru- you know like yeah. in, in that in that sense of like yeah you know and we're, we're seeing, we're seeing divisions of, of that yeah uh, we're seeing that being hand- divided now in rule books i think root is a really good example they have a rule book which teaches you how to play in the more narrative style you know like hey you're gonna here's the flow of the turns and let's go through them one by one and so forth they also have a separate book which is more of a reference which takes all the rules that are in that teaching mod book and just breaks them up. So like when you want you to do combat and you're like, how does combat work again? You just can just look under, look under the letter C and find the rules for combat, right. along with some of those edge cases that maybe weren't necessary to teach you in the how to play because you're probably not going to encounter that in every fight or whatever, right? And then they have a third book, which is a, we're going to walk you through the first round of the game. That is one of the best examples I've seen of trying to do the best of everything by a player for a game that is quite complex. You know, obviously, yeah, you know, if you're talking a game like Just One, I don't need all of that, right? Uh, a game that's very simple or a party game. But for something as complex as Root, I, I, I do like to see that. I like to see that supportive work. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, Liftoff, the original uh, Pencil First mm-hmm. Games, we, we uh, actually, we did take the, um, did the thing where you do the, we had the, it wasn't in different booklets, but it was the how yeah. to play and then the reference. And then, Actually, at the time, um, I don't know if I had seen it in some other game or just like thought it would be helpful or like had extra pages. I don't remember. <laughs> but like literally was like, let's have a turn guy. Let, let's have an example of play that was like, you know, four turns or five turns highlighting a game. And, build. you know, what? actually I did that in the siblings trouble. I think I just it, it, it takes. A, OK, it takes a lot of effort to build those. It's surprising. It does. Yeah. Um, but also because one of the challenges that you face when you start like. Something that's I would generally for a not not novice but a, a a new rule book writer something I would I would suggest they don't do is like don't put the same rules in different places like mm-hmm. because what what oftentimes happen is somebody will phrase a rule differently in those two places <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you better be that, you better be real precise <laughs> yeah yeah yes, like yeah. like if you're gonna if you're gonna like duplicate it's like don't duplicate rules because. Yeah. You know, generally speaking, it's just error prone and even not even errors, but like subtle changes in language create ambiguity um, or a different type of ambiguity. And so when you end up doing (laughs) when you end up doing the thing where you have the main one and then the reference and then like the example of play, you'll get questions like, well, in the rules, it says this. But in the example, they do this. Like which, you know, um, and that that might've been why after I did it on a couple games, it was like, well, I have to say, I, I've never been a, like, I just praised root, right. For its technique. And, and, but I've never been a fan of the dual rule book system for the, for the reason I said about Eldritch Horror, which is, I don't know what I don't know. So I don't know to look up a rule that I don't even know exists in the first place. Right. So it takes a very deft and delicate hand to do this system well. Root got really close because basically everything that's in the learn to play kind of helping guide is – they're kind of in both places. They're just arranged differently. That's what I want to see. I want to see a complete how to play guide with no rules left out arranged narratively. And I want to have a reference over here for when I just need to look something up because it is difficult to go through a narratively written – I, that's what I, I say narratively written as in the author of the rule book is talking to me and being conversational. Right, that's right. how I. And there's I, plenty of examples of that with humor and jokes. I mean, I think it was um, the Trogdor game, which was like a, like a hilarious rule book, like a witty yes. rule book. But at times you're like, OK, wait a minute. Is this the joke part? Or like, Yeah. When I say destroyed. conversational, I just mean like uh, it's not dry, but I don't right. want, I, I personally don't want, uh, banter in my rule book. Cause it's actually similar to my tutorial videos in some respect. Uh, if I can just get self-indulgent, there was a time early on in my, when I was doing tutorial videos, like when I first started, I would do a lot of additional banter 
And I came to realize that's not why someone's here to watch this video. They're here so they can go spend time with their friends. They don't want to spend time with me. They want to go play this game they just bought. I need to get you in and out as quickly as possible. I want you spending as little time with me as possible. I feel the same way about the rule book. I want to spend as little time with my nose in that rule book as possible. So please don't fill it up with a bunch of fluff I got to read through. But I, I, I mean, conversational in terms of it's not written statically like a technical document. Yeah, yeah. So that I'm falling asleep as I read it. Like I want to, I want to, like again, this one provides no context. Right, right. Next to no context for anything. So I want a little bit of here's why this rule connects to that rule and here's what you're doing in the game, you know? Yeah. And so you're inherently, I mean, at least as far as professionally, um, you know, absorbing the rules with the intent of creating a script and with mm -hmm. the intent of teaching it, right? Um, yeah. Like, would you say generally even not professionally, are you somebody who is more at, uh, more more frequently going to like pre-read rule? Like, hey, we got some people coming over. I'm going to like learn how to play this game, read the rules, and then, you know, play it, you know, uh, uh, teach it or uh, with the group then? Or, or are you more of the like, hey, let's play this game, open it up and grab the rules? <laughs> well, it's I've done both. Uh, I just actually had a had a little game gathering recently um, and a little a little both happened. One where we just cracked the box open and just read from the rules. That was because that was not how I planned it. Everyone was very excited about a particular game I had on the shelf. I'm like, okay, sure. If you guys don't mind reading from the rules, we'll do it. But for the game I really wanted to teach that day, I had read the rules through a couple of times. Again, it was this one, so I'll just keep coming back to it. If you notice, if you look in the in the rule book here, I'll try to hold it up so you can see it on screen. I highlight. Oh, that's not from that's yours. I thought that's that me. like you no, should that's send them me. photos of this. Yeah, that's me going, hey, this rule is strange. Like, I, I know how to play this game, but this is an oddball thing that won't necessarily come to my mind. I want to be able to quickly just open this up and go, yeah, yeah, that's how this works. This is wow. going to jump off the pitch. It I also like means like three game. weeks later, when I'm going to teach it again, I can skim just for my highlighting and go, oh, yeah, those are the things that give me trouble. I now have it again. Right. Because I think I don't, I don't enjoy learning a game from somebody where I'm losing confidence in them. And it happens so often, you know what I mean? And I, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. They're, they're referring or they're like, you can tell they're not quite sure exactly how it works. And they're starting to question themselves because then I start going like, well, does any of this matter? <laughs> does any of this work the way you're saying it does? You know? Um, that, so yeah, that is, an, that is uh, you know, a metaphor for so many things in life right there. <laughs> I suppose it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I definitely, definitely a lot of prep goes in. I, I read the rules through again. If I can find a little cheat sheet online that someone's done a summary, I'll, I'll try to refresh my mind that way or my own little cheat sheets. Yeah. It's funny because I think for myself, um, that, I, I certainly the better way to do it, <laughs> and I've, I've 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 found myself in in many a ruined evening for not doing it that way. <laughs> sure, but but as a as a consumer, as a player, that's not yeah. what I I want. Um, and I'm not I don't know how many group people I represent, but like yeah, the idea of like buying a product and then having an instruction manual I have to read in yeah. advance of actually using the product when I want to use it is like not natural to me. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm much more, and so, you know, I get, you know, I get games, a, 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 you know, big set of games, but like, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Like I, I want to like, I, I think fairy tale in, uh, is an example of a game, which okay. I, I think is great, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a lighter, lighter game, but I was able to like pull it out and we just played it. Right. And you learned it and played it. Um, but you know, there's a, there's a tension at a, yeah. there's a tension in gamers, which is. And I, I'll speak a, a give an example. Colby, Colby Doak from Plat Hat Games. I don't think he'll mind me saying this because we've talked about this openly on his podcast. Even, you know, he doesn't like opening up a like when he sees a big rule book. He starts to get a little nervous about what he's walking into. Like, oh, oh sure. how much am, how much are we going to have to deal with before we get to have the fun of the game? So when he's even designing his own games and he's looking at his own rule book, he's like, I don't want this to be a big burden when someone opens it up. You know, and now they got all this stuff they've got to read. But my little pushback on that is. Look, your game is what it is. If you don't want it to be a 10-page rule book, you got to design a simpler game. But you you can't make the game simpler by removing by making the rule book shorter. Like the rule book is I mean the game is what it is. If it takes 10 pages to confidently explain it, then it takes 10 pages. You but, know? I, but, but but this is it, it's super important. I think this is a great point. Um and and it speaks to like, you know, just my example right now, they're like, well, Ed, you just picked like a, a hyper casual, like connect four plus plus game from. Mm. But 
Yeah. I think I don't think publishers think enough about I mean I picked that example I could go through more but think yeah. enough about their audience and the game and the, right. and the product type like if you're 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 giving me a party game and it's got a 20 page rule book like mm -hmm. or it's a it's a game that you're like you're like let's get this into target like it's branded you know not necessarily for oh, that's, children that's a good but, point you're right it can be mismatched in both directions right yeah, you're right. Um, you, if you have something that's that's you know meant to be easier access, or it's a target game, or something you're trying to reach a broader audience, you gotta think about what that rule book and how it's going to present itself. And again, I also would say you gotta think about the design you're making there. If you're trying to hit a target audience, well, well, right? Well, I think it's all in there. Exactly. It, it's yeah. just sort of like, hey, there's making a game for yourself, and then just t telling the rule. I, I guess what I'm sort of saying is you're like, well, it's the game's the game. It's just like make sure that don't just think about the games and the rules. Think about what is this product? What is the audience? What is, you know, if you're going to say it's a 20 minute game, but it has a 35 minute rule book, you know, that's right. one thing. Or, you, <laughs> sure. you, you know, you have a game that's inherently a two hour, you know, monstrous game. Um, you know, then you shouldn't have a problem with the more extended rule book. You know, there's right. an interesting right. thing. Like I, I think about like, you know, this is well, 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 sort of embarrassing, I guess. Well, two things, two examples. Okay. One will be title blades. Yes. This gorgeous big thing. This is sort of a component rule book thing, but like Right. It's so enticing, so family friendly looking and like I, I wanna play it, but every time I go to it, I just like it's just like I don't have time for this. And then it's I big. it gets yeah, put yeah. there for the other one. Another one like um Clank uh Legacy was another example of it like everything is cool about it but like and that's a good game that does the journey it's a legacy game but that's sort of like hey you're gonna like don't open this until you do it. it's a sort of right, like nice right. gives you a bit um, of time yeah but like it it also this is a weird example of the legacy play example where it's like i sort of this is like enough going on here that to play this i want to like be able to explain this well to people mm -hmm. but it's sort of like trying not to tell me what i need to it sort of wants us all to start playing together and learning <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. But like I my audience won't sit for that. And then you like the gears stop and then you're like, I'm just gonna pick another game and this is gonna go back. We'll try this again next time. Well right? listen, you know, that's the other thing. For for all the potential criticisms I might level at certain rule books and how they're arranged, the reality is every group is different. Yeah. You know what I just what I just finished telling you about this rule book I keep picking up because it's my latest obsession game. The other thing is that the people who are, this is a war game, and the people who sort of traditionally play those styles of games, that's what they expect. Right. They expect to sit there for an entire day learning the game to just scratch the surface. And so their expecta their expectations are met by a rule book like this. Whereas someone like me, my expectations coming from more the generalized board gaming world is like, that's not what I expect <laughs> when I, I open a, a game. Yeah. Even after I've learned how to play it, I go... I would teach this entirely differently than this rule book does. But again, that's me coming from my experience. Now, does my experience represent broadly most people? I don't know. I mean, we always have this temptation to want to believe we do, right? So then, of course, I give my tips and advice to somebody based on what I think would sure, be helpful sure. for most people. But well, and another so, would be like, yeah, different. And 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 I, you know, we've we've been talking for a good amount of time. I did want to get to yeah. one other sort of line of question. So, but so sure. you go through this process that I just I I thought would be interesting to understand and share, which is okay. We've talked about things about rules and preferences and gone yeah. down random random ra rabbit holes. But you then have this job you do, which is you right. sort of like translate rules into how you're going to teach it, and and in particular, like how you're going to film it, like how you're going to present it. Right, <laughs> right sure. Yeah, and yeah. so for those who have no idea of what happens between you, like receiving a box from a publisher and being on screen teaching it, like right. what's your actual process? Sure. Okay. I'll try to summarize this quickly. So let's say I get a game from a publisher. Well, first of all, I wouldn't get the game from the publisher. I would say, hey, publisher, you're interested in maybe me doing a tutorial video. Send me the rules PDF. This because is true. I, I like you, do, act... you, you do read the rules first. I try to. I try to at least give them a, a – if it's not like a word by word, it's a pretty good read over because it is – you always lose something when you don't have the game in front of you. It's all a bit abstract. Unless they've done a great job with pictures, you're sort of like imagining things, right? But I try to get a sense of how good the rulebook is because honestly, if the rulebook is really, really bad, sometimes I'll just not do it because I don't expect my video to be a complete replacement for the rulebook. I hope it can be and for a lot of people, it will be. But – Sometimes people will be playing, they're like, I don't remember how this works. They then need to go to the rule book to get the answer. They're not going to necessarily want to jump over to my video and rewatch it or search for the answer, right? 
So if the rule book is not a good complement to my video and vice versa, I'm like, I don't know that I even want to feature this because I'm not sure. You've got a bigger problem here. <laughs> it's kind of what, I'm, what I end up feeling. Anyway, that aside, let's just say I agree to do it. Then, yes, I get the, the game home. I open it up and I learn it myself from the rule book the way I expect a person would have to do getting the game. And as I'm playing it out, I'm making making notes and, and writing down my questions. And then usually after that, I, I will go to Board Game Geek and I'll search the rules for them if the game's been out already for a little bit. And I'll find every question someone's asked oh, in there. And I'll I'll summarize all those. I'll look for common threads. People keep asking this question because maybe it's something I didn't have a question about. Like maybe the answer – a lot of times the, the, the questions people ask on Board Game Geek are addressed in the rule book, but somebody missed it. So if they're missing it, it means maybe this wasn't emphasized enough. You know, and so I'll go, okay, I'm going to emphasize this when I get to this part in the, in the video. Generally speaking, though, you'll, you'll find things that just aren't in the rule book that you missed. And then I'll ask the publisher those questions. They'll generally get back to me, and then I start scripting. And I just start at the beginning of the rule book, once again, and I just start re rewriting everything in the rule book from sort of start to finish. Now, I will jump around because the order is not always going to be the same. But I make sure that basically every word I've gone through, I'm sort of crossing it off in my head, basically, right. as I go. And is it fair to say that you don't have an audience for this? Which, which I mean to say is like when you're going through this rewrite, rule rewrite, prep, teaching mm -hmm. process. It is it. It's essentially just you using your gut and your skill set to sort of lay it all out and pull it together. Or sort of. Like... I'll play the game thoroughly first, right? And I'll, I'll usually either, either I'm playing solo or I'm playing with somebody else. Usually I'll recruit somebody in my family or a game group coming over. I mean, obviously in the last year, it's been mostly family because of COVID, right? Um, and so we'll play together and I'll look for quite like, cause there's also things that come up in card interactions, things that just, you know, that you don't see until you get playing. Like, oh, I understood it when I was on the page of the rule book. Now I'm playing. I don't really understand how, what happens when this thing bumps up against that thing. Right. And yeah, so, so that is done with an audience, at least of the other player at the table right? Uh, and seeing what their questions are. But most of it is kind of a solitary thing and me trying to best imagine what is, I'll tell you that if there's one thing that maybe I'm half decent at, and that's kind of essential to the rule, the script writing process, is once I've learned how to play, I'm pretty good at forgetting everything I know. And right. starting at, at page one going, okay, I have to pretend I don't know anything that I do know. What would somebody who knows nothing about this game need first to start putting those puzzle pieces together? Because I think that's one of the tricks, and I think it's also a challenge for people who write rule books. They already know how to play. They can't see the stuff that's confusing because it's not confusing to them because they know how to play. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, no, I, I think having that that skill set of, of, of fresh eyes and being able to sort of sit in the persona of the person playing or, 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 or reading for the first yeah. time is like a, a, a critical skill. I, I, I will note, because I, I, it's amazing mm. that it doesn't happen, it's really easy if you don't have that skill to get, you just give the document to somebody who hasn't seen it before. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing, that, that, it's an amazing thing. Just absolutely. I mean, one of the biggest tips I would have to anyone who's writing rules for board games is please, when you think you're done, please do give your, your final rules to someone who's never played your game before and just sit there quietly and watch if they don't mind being you, having you creepily watch yeah, and yeah. don't help them yeah. and ask them to just speak out loud what they think they're learning. You will find so many mistakes for sure. There are so many sure. things that you're like, oh, but this is so clear. Well, no, it isn't because that person is having trouble. So yeah. it's not clear, you know, yeah. um, so many things I've, I've found are like anyone would catch, have this problem in their first play, you know, yeah. but you don't know yeah. that until you're outside of it a little bit. Yeah. And I think even in that, there's a, I, I, another thing I see, there's a tendency is like somebody will do that on draft one and then be right. draft two, draft three, draft four. And then they go back to the well of the people who were helpful to them along the way. And so yes. they're, they're the bias isn't the right word, but they're tainted. <laughs> tainted no, they're, they're already the coached right up. They already know yeah. what the answers right. are, so they're not going to have the same questions. You need someone yeah. totally fresh. Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, uh, uh, Isaac Childress, to his credit, for Jaws of the Lion, when he got that pretty much done, and he's already done Gloomhaven. So you could argue, like, he's already had experience with writing the rules to his games. Um, he had me and several others blind play test his finished rules, and it helped us find a few little things that he was then able to tighten up, right? So, and, and the that stuff was that he. Really... I haven't I haven't played it, um, but <laughs> you know if I if my understanding of the product is correct, that was a big effort to streamline and make more accessible the, that world, right? And that yeah. and, and that make game. no mistake about it, it's still a giant game. Like the, the reality is, I wouldn't hand this to someone who's a brand new gamer and go, "Well, you're going to have this is going to be a walk in the park for you." But I think he did everything possible 
to make it as much of a walk in the park as possible to a brand new gamer. And I think that deserves some kudos. Actually, while I'm here and I'm, I'm on your show, I should probably pay you a few kudos because I've featured a number of your games on the channel as well. Yeah. And that's one of the things I found really great is I don't think, and you could probably affirm this now, I don't think I usually come to you with like a whole bunch of pages of questions on clarifications. I've found typically your rule books comprehensively cover the things that, uh, that come up when teaching. Well, thank you. Uh, yes. You know, it, they're fortunately smaller games. That does help for sure. Do you do anything in your efforts to sort of like ensure that those things get covered that maybe you might not see in your own rules? Um, Are you just yeah. that good? No, no. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I think. Okay, so and 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 it's interesting. I, I have an interesting job because very often I'm not. They're not my rules per se. Right, right. Uh, right. They're the the rules of games that I've been you know, actively working on developing with a, you know, a, a designer, um, sure. some of the earlier ones, that wasn't the case, but so, uh, designers are all different and they all do their roles different. And generally designers don't write good rule. Well, okay. Let me, let me say, let me say this right. Well, the, the, I think uh, uh, the, uh, a nice way for they're prone to making those mistakes if they already know the game so well, <laughs> but even more so I, I agree, but I guess the distinction yeah. is the, the, the expectation of a designer who's who's yeah. working with a publisher is that they will be providing what is typically a word doc with their rules. That's just right. words, it, you know. Sometimes in a good order, sometimes not. Different designers do it in different ways, um, yeah. but they're, they're they're not. There's no. They don't. They're typically not providing any layout. They well, they sure. might be providing some images or a diagram or two. They're not. So they're actually generally. You're the requirement on a design, and maybe I should just have work with. But like you know, like Steve Finn, he makes incredible games. His designs are clear. His rule, his 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 rules are clear. But they're just you know, he just like he typed them out, and they're you know in a line. Yes. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And so and 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 it's interesting because how Steve lays it out is very different than how Scott Caputo lays it out, which is very different than right. Keith Mateko laying it out, and and these guys do it differently. Um, and so like what what I often have to do, which is a good part of the process, is I start with this thing that's not mine. Mm. Um, I've played the game involved, but like they send me something and then I move it usually into a, they'll like into a Google doc or something. And right. then I have like the template that I've used across all these games that are pretty, pretty standard. Yeah. And then I start like bashing Slotting it in. it in. Yeah. And, and, and bashing <laughs> it in and then re and then I, then I read it and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And then I do it again. And then, and then I had to go back to them to be like, Hey, like this is it's conceptually the same, but it's different. And then we in, in the process of me bashing this in, did I change anything? <laughs> did I change it? Well, and, 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 and a lot of times you'll hit something where you like, I had to rewrite this section like seven times to like, try to make this concept clear. Yeah. Can we just. Right. Not like, yes. what is the value to the game for this little, like blah, 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 blah. Can I just shuffle the cards? Cause it sounds like at the end, the difference mm. between these two games is like one percent, but the difference in teaching is like significant. And I think that's a, like that's such a big takeaway. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm sure designers. I'm not a designer, never been. I'm sure that designers get very married to certain rules and things that are, make up the part of their game. But I do think that's so valuable, especially for the, if you're the publisher or you're the person who has to sell this game or you want this game to be received by the community. Like going, okay, this ten step process that we're saying people have to do, and now we have to teach. And then that person who learned it has to teach to all their friends. What is it adding to the game? Is it adding those 10 steps worth of merit? If so, well, then maybe it's worth it. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I, it, I say, even I, if we knock off a couple things, even if we lose something in this design by removing those 10 steps, are we gaining so much more? You know, possibly, right? Yeah. I, um, so, so having a template to go against has been really helpful. Getting fo using photographs to put in example layouts early, I think, is great. Like rather mm. than waiting for a graphic designer, uh, if you're really smart, and I never do this until like it bites me, um, make a not to provide to players, but make a glossary of terms, capitalization, bolding, underlining, and like your rules of engagement for your rules. We are always going to capitalize these terms. We are always going to refer to this as this. This is the mm -hmm. vocabulary and lexicon of this document. Solidify that so that you don't have to go through the process of redoing it, reworking it over, and then and then editing it, um, which I always have to do. Actually, it was really the worst example probably is the 100 Tory, which right. is a, I, I'm very happy with that rule book. Vincent yeah. Trade is an amazing graphic designer for rule books. It's, yes. I think it works, 
but we're working on the expansion and we're like, Hey, did we capitalize journey? Let's right. go look at the, like literally. Okay. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh wait, we did on page four, but wait on page eight, we here. didn't. <laughs> So right, now, now yes. we don't even have a, a place to look at anymore. Uh, and so there was, there was uh, too much for my taste on re, on re, on having to look at it again. Right. Errors. Um, I think the other um, useful thing is so doing the glossary up front is useful. Oh, having an editor edit before graphic design touches it. Like oh it yeah, is, I can it, see that it, being valuable. Like, yeah, you do it. You do the review. Like that is all great, but that's not the same as getting the person that tells you that etc. is etc. period comma, right? Yeah, like yeah. Or, or whatever. Like and um, yeah. Before you start locking in the the shaping of it on a page with yeah. with the graphic so, design, so, I can see that being so, very valuable. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. The amount the and especially because like, you know, going back and forth and having like a, a graphic designer. Different people are different people, but like many times, graphic designers do not see themselves as text editors. They, they right. will do it. Right. But like if you yeah. have a graphic designer going back in and you're like, hey, can you fix these? Hey, can you fix these? Um, yeah. That is not their favorite thing to do. Trust me. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, those are all sort of helpful tips. But I do think yeah. reading a lot of rules, playing a lot of games, and then, you know, definitely doing blind re reads are great. Um, I, I'll give one little yeah. tip in case any any graphic designers or publishers are, are, are watching this. I would say, please, please, please don't put graphics behind your text ever. Ever oh, yeah. like this is like there's you know they're, they're sort of simulating Mars's surface here behind the text so you've got dark stuff on dark text and I can read it my eyes are fine but you're creating impediments <laughs> to my reading okay well, yeah and yeah, this is not I, this is not the worst example I've got worse um just don't ever do that but again I you... get what's happening it's cool it looks cool but you're not this is not the purpose. It's to help me learn, and that's not helping me learn. Again, that's Rodney's theory on it hey, anyway. Hey, don't don't use white over black rules text. Don't mm -hmm. um, use a header font for your body text. Like right. yeah. like the some of them. Fall, I mean, those, the, I think those are these are good examples. But like legibility is part. I, like, like one of the things that I like to say, and now we're sort of again all over the place. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I think you need to think of the entire unboxing, the period from unboxing to play as, you know, this unit, uh, th this is, is as important, not as, you know, to the gameplay experience, not as important, if you know what I'm saying, but like significantly, a significant multiplier in the experience your person is about to have with your product, their understanding of it, their engagement of it. And it's those little weights, you know, like you want to make sure that they can clearly read the rules. The rules are laid out nicely and clarity. And if you say, grab these cards, there's an indicator of what cards those are. Or yes, they absolutely. Might be. Like, how, it's, how, how hard is it going to be for me to find which cards those are? How, how easy did you make it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so like, the, is can these have different card backs? Are they ever in the same deck? They're not? Give right. them different card backs. Yes, but that, yeah, yeah. It's part of the... The learning experience, we've been really focused on the rule book, but it's also iconography and the visual representation and, you know. There's a lot that can support the learning experience. You're right. In the actual production of the game, there's a lot of things that can be done to help make that learning experience easier, you know, along with the rule book. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. for sure. Um, and, and I'm not always, I, I don't always succeed, but there's sometimes even little things, like what a little correction. Uh, had a, a, you know, like, you can order your cards in any order you want. So like, hey, for one, you can actually, uh, like an example was uh, I did a, for Foliferous, uh, which I okay. uh, haven't played, but maybe you will. Um, there's a mini expansion where each player gets three cards. Uh, yeah. And the first layout was the cards alternating, right? Like player one, player two, player three. Player right, one, player two, right. Player three, player two, player three. And like, you know, like when you see the PDF and you're like reviewing the files, it isn't, you just, it looks like, like whatever it's it, it's there but like then you open the box and you like go to hand it out and you're like wait a minute one two three, one, <laughs> yeah, two, three sort, one. Yeah. <laughs> and like it's a burden you don't have to pass on to the player and in this yeah. case I, I, it's a good example because we fixed it um yeah but uh you, you know i think or like you know just the weird place where like i, I um i feel like honey buzz had a, had a couple things but one one example for me I, i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly they do the thing where they send you the stack of the deck and it's like all the different card types are like interspersed. Like, so it's like a, a thick thing where it's like 
four of these cards. Right. They kind of come cards. almost shuffled. Or yeah, something it, but like, together. I don't mind shuffle cards if it's the same deck. But it's like, why? Yeah, yeah. Why do I have to? I'm opening a brand new thing, and you're making me sort it. Like, why am yeah. I sorting this? You can sort this yes. for me. Um, right. But anyway. Um, well, I I'll think, say something. Oh, One thing I always feel like I feel obligated to say in any of these conversations for myself is it is much easier to come in from my perspective and be a critic than it is to start with a blank page and have to write oh, something sure. from scratch. So oh, it's yes, all, I just want to, like, anyone's listening going, oh, it's easy for you to say. I just want to acknowledge, yes, it is easy for me to say. And I do recognize it. And I don't think that means people shouldn't work to make it better because I've seen great examples where people have definitely taken the time and care to take a very complicated thing and make it easier for someone to approach. So there are definitely tools we can get, but I do recognize this is not an easy thing our hobby has to deal with. Yeah. And what I... You are 100% correct, and I do think having being somebody who makes this stuff and works on this, it is a ton of work, a ton of people put their heart and soul. Even the worst yeah. game, somebody put heart and soul in. Yes, most yeah, of yeah. Um, what I will say, everything you said was true, mm. but I would just note to those people, hey, it's easy for people to be a critic, and oftentimes if you let people be a critic early – it's easy to fix those problems. Right. Yeah, that's so, a great that's a great like, point. Like, yeah, like, invite the critics in early. Some publishers will put their rule books out into the wild and go like, "Hey, any feedback on this?" And if you listen, you'll often get that feedback, which can yeah. really help you. And then you can save a whole bunch of people trouble. You just yes. you just annoy a small handful rather than like everyone who buys well, your game. And when you save those people trouble, trust me, you 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 save yourself trouble. I mean, like yes. it's little things catching that over the course of a game you changed an account of a, a token and you're yeah. now only shipping 12 of them. But for some reason, right. the rule book still says 15. Yeah. That is going to cost you a lot of time one way or the yes, other. Yes, people running, am I missing something? You're going to get yeah. that comment. How many emails is that? Yeah, I, I agree, 100%. <laughs> anyway, 100%. Um, I could keep talking. Sometimes <laughs> when these videos get really long, like they don't actually properly save, and I don't want and, that to yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's a pleasure being on, and I do think um, it, it's really I, – I, I hope people get – that it, it, it can be a joyous thing. Like I think sometimes burdens and teach uh, rule books and, and teaching can be like feel burdensome to somebody who's just making the game. But yeah. um, there's a lot of fun and opportunity to be had to, and when you're trying to make it a great experience. Rule books are like, I love rule books. They are what make that inanimate object box be something. Yeah. The art helps and all that, but again, it's just ink on a token until I know what it does. And the only thing that gives me that is the rule book. The rule book is the lifeblood of the game. So like get excited about your rule book. This is what's going to get people into the adventure. Uh, like yeah. try to attack it with that kind of energy because it, it, it does a magical thing. I love reading a rule book and going like, oh, that's how that works. Oh, that's fascinating. Oh, I can, you can start to imagine what the game's going to be like, you know? So yeah. yeah, it can be a drudgery, but it can be pretty exciting too for yeah. the person who's getting a good rule book. For sure. I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This was a great a pleasure. Chat. Hopefully <laughs> folks find it uh, both interesting and entertaining. Um, I hope so too. <laughs> but anyway, talk to you later. Yeah, take care, everybody. Bye. Hey, everybody. Edo here. And thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist. League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff, but most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.